The idea for a high-voltage electron microscope in the Olin Materials Center resulted from discussions in 1968 among a group of faculty from science, engineering, biology, and medicine. In 1969, building modifications were started. In May of 1970, the electron microscope arrived from Japan in 94 packing crates weighing 30 tons. Although heavy, each component was precision made and delicate and had to be unpacked carefully. The microscope room had already been prepared. It had been necessary to cut a large hole through the ceiling from the first to the second floor and also to excavate below ground level in order to accommodate the 25 foot height of the microscope. A special five-ton crane was necessary to lift and position the components. A steel framework of pillars and cross beams was erected into accurately predetermined position. This was very important for precise alignment and vibration-free mounting of the microscope. The suspension system was to consist of a five-ton steel plate mounted on rubber pads on top of the framework with a microscope hanging underneath and the high voltage tank sitting on top. Having assembled the framework, it was possible to start placing in position the five ton steel plate, the bottom half of the high voltage tank, and the dome of the high voltage tank. The microscope column was built up step by step, starting at the base, which contains the camera chamber and viewing screen. The vacuum system at the rear of the microscope is an important feature since electrons can only travel down the column in a high vacuum. This is achieved with an ion pump, three diffusion pumps, two mechanical pumps, and a great deal of plumbing. The assembly of the precision-made components and the intricate electrical wiring of the electronic controls was performed by three technical experts from the Hitachi factory in Japan. At each stage of the assembly, the system was checked out. After three months of assembly and checking, the high-voltage electron microscope was working perfectly from the column containing seven electromagnetic lenses for bending the path of the electrons and giving enormous magnifications up to the electron accelerator which produces a beam of electrons moving at nine tenths of the speed of light inside the high voltage tank. Specimens must be in the form of thin films about one hundred thousandth of an inch thick which are placed on a specimen holder. The specimen is held in place by a washer and then secured by a cap. The specimen holder is inserted into an airlock chamber. It is drawn inside and vacuum sealed so that the specimen chamber can be pumped out and closed off from the outside air. The specimen holder can now be inserted into the column. And the specimen is in position to be examined by passing the electron beam through it. The versatility of the high voltage electron microscope is illustrated by its large number of control features. Voltages up to 650,000 volts, specimen movement and heating, stereo microscopy, diffraction, magnification up to 200,000 times and so on. A magnified image of the specimen can be observed on a fluorescent screen using a binocular microscope and a permanent high resolution picture can be obtained photographically. Here we see a high magnification picture of a plastic film on the fluorescent screen. This microscope is one of only four in the United States and is the most powerful at an American university. 
This makes Case Western Reserve University a regional center where scientists can probe the innermost structure of such materials as biological cells, metals, plastics, moon rocks, and bacteria to find answers to both practical and fundamental questions.